Carrie Aarons is here, Marty Halverson, Vicki Schneider, Chad Palachek, Todd Wolf, Marcus, Mayor Vandersteen, Lori Serkey, and Scott. <laughs> Very good. Well, I will call the meeting to order if you will all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you are... I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, very good. Um, our first item of business is the approval of minutes from our October 19th meeting. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you. 3.1 is a claim from Gordon Zastro for alleged injuries for a trip on uneven payment, pavement. Um, Chuck? So the, we have already sent a letter of denial on this, so the proper motion would be to file. All right, do we have a motion to file? Move to file. Second. Is there a second? <laughs> if there was a second, I didn't hear it. Uh, second from Trey. All right. Any questions, Roberta? I have a question. Um, it it looks pretty ordinary. Do, do we have a rationale for denial? You're muted, Chuck. <laughs> You're muted, Chuck. Oh, yeah, I must have hit the wrong button here. Um, so there's a couple of reasons. Uh, one is basically the law doesn't necessarily provide that we would have to pay a claim like this unless there is actually negligence on our part. Uh, and second of all, we do have a sidewalk inspection program. We weren't aware that, that there was an issue at this particular location. And so again, there wouldn't be a basis for negligence. Uh, so uh, for that reason, we are denying. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, we're looking for a motion to file this document. Move to file. And is there a second? Second, Boren. All right, very good. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, so let's go on to. 3.2, which is a notice of circumstances and claim for damages um, for injuries to AHA bus, AYA bus. Um, Chuck? Yeah, so this is another one where we've received the claim and have already sent a notice of denial. So again, the uh, proper motion here would be to file. All right. Uh, anyone have questions for Chuck? Uh, this is Alderman Boren. Uh, Chuck, is uh, this person involved with another lawsuit suing the suing the police department? Yeah, well, this this is a claim that is against the city, and of course, the police department is a part of the city. Uh, oh. They have not they have not filed a lawsuit uh, against the the city. Okay. Yeah, I I, I read this over and. I was uh, I was just wondering if uh, they were going to take other le legal action besides this. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. Can we have a motion to file? So moved. Second. And is there a second? Second. Did I hear a second? Okay. Whoever that was, thank you. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any, opposed? Any opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.3 3 is a claim from Barbara Selke for alleged injuries uh, sustained on the sidewalk. Chuck? This is another one where we have already sent a notice of denial, and so we are looking for a uh, uh, motion to file. Any questions for Chuck? 
If not, could I have a that motion to file? Move to file. Motion to file, Baron. Second. And and we have a second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Moving along to 3.4, which is a resolution authorizing an application to HUD through Section 108 of the Housing and Community Development Act. Chad, I expect this is your bailiwick. Yeah, so what we're planning to do here is use this Section 108 program, which is a low interest loan funding program through HUD to fund projects that are serving low to moderate income households and in those types of areas. So the Section 108 program allows us to leverage our annual grant allocation to basically as a loan um, for specific projects. So what we're looking for is uh, to allocate under the Section 108 program 3.2, 200000 in loan proceeds to be used towards the purchase of the former Save-A-Lot that we're looking to convert into the senior center at a value of about 700,000, and then to use roughly 2.5 million of those funds for renovation dollars. Um, we had a conference call a few weeks ago with HUD and walked through how this program works, and the current interest rate of the loan is 0.63% for 20 years. Um, we would then allocate the debt service payments as uh, future block grant allocations through our yearly allocation process and uh, estimates are somewhere in the range of 160 to 175,000 a year for principal and interest payments on that debt over the course of 20 years. Um, this program would not go against the city's borrowing capacity as other uh, general obligation borrowing does uh, and we are HUD does a calculation and they give us a value each year of what our borrowing capacity is and ours is about 4.2 million. So uh, we feel that this is a low cost way of moving forward and funding um, the renovation as well as a, a partial of the reimbursement of the city's proceeds for the uh, purchase of the building. Um, HUD, the security of this loan from HUD will be a first position lien on the real estate once we get to closing. So before we can move forward with this, we're looking for support from the Common Council as well as uh, we'll have to do a 30-day public comment period and then submit the application sometime in mid-December. Questions for Chad? Bert? Um, <clears throat> Did I hear accurately that the interest rate for 20 years is 0.63? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Chair? Chair? Yes. No, this is Todd Wolf. Go ahead. Uh, Chair, I just want to let everybody know that um, obviously I, Chad and myself and the team, we recommend this highly. Uh, not, I mean, the interest rate is phenomenal. Um, also, the 20-year term and the fact that it does not affect our geo debt um, in calculations. Plus, the, if you think about it, we're, because of the way we're doing the funding, it's not going to come out of our operating cost. So this is kind of a win-win. And please understand that other communities use this type of an opportunity for similar activities. So this is something that I think is uh, very beneficial for the city of Sheboygan in the development of our senior center for the future. Thank you. Just to clear. Um, I guess my, I, I, I agree with everything that's been said. Um, I guess my question is, if this is, an, uh, as I understand it, a reallocation of HUD money and CDBG money, um, what uh, won't be funded or what programs or um, uh, pieces that might be available for the low-income community won't be available, if any? Well, we, we get, a, we get 917000 give or take, per year. As you recall, the Finance Committee and the Council allocates funding to public service projects, to street projects, to park projects, uh, admin costs. So we would just, it would go against, you know, potentially a 
a street project or a uh, parks project that we have allocated. So, I mean, I don't, given the low amount of money, I don't think it's going to have a huge, it's definitely not going to go against public service or the admin dollars. Um, so it'll just, it'll just be like a, pro, a park project that we're just allocating each year as part of our allocation. The other thing I just want to mention is the 0.63% interest is a, what HUD called a temporary or a, a short-term interest rate. Um, and then the, uh, so they, they do buyouts of the interest rate every few years, every three three to five years or something, and then you get into a permanent financing rate. Uh, but at any rate, they're still low interest loans. So, so potentially in year three, it could be 1.75% interest. That is correct. Thank you. Chair, I have a question. Go ahead. Although I'm in favor of this project, uh, this information does have me a little bit concerned. When does this teaser rate expire and what would be the maximum rate it could be on this adjustable rate mortgage? <clears throat> well, they, they wouldn't be an adjustable rate mortgage. It would be this short term rate until we do a permanent finance refinancing, if you will, with HUD. Um, and there's no given time frame as to when they buy these loans out or however they do it internally. Um, they told us they just did one two years ago, I think, or something. 2019. So, and I think at that time it was under one and a half percent or something. So then you would lock in for the rest of the term. Um, and at that point, the city could decide, is that make sense and is this working for us or do we want to refinance this with uh, general obligation borrowing, if we can get it at a cheaper rate, there's no pre payment penalties to buy it out. So, um, you know, I think it it's an opportunity, but I think at the same token, we don't also have to budget general fund dollars to make the debt service payment either because we're going to use federal block grant dollars. Thank you. Just for, for a little bit more clarity, I don't know if you said it, I missed it. How long do we have this introductory rate? for three to five years until HUD does a permanent financing. <clears throat> Thank you. Chair, this is Marty. If I may, I believe what they referenced was 30, 30 points ab above LIBOR, 30 basis points above LIBOR. However, LIBOR will end as we know it on December 31st of 2021. So we'll need to have a different reference point, um, but it at least does give us a, a benchmark for now. Marty, why don't you explain to folks what LIBOR is? LIBOR is an interest rate um, world globally that's, I believe it's based out of Europe somewhere. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's England. England, so it's, it's truly just the, the global market interest rate. So that's one of the most common benchmarks used. Uh, GFOA, Government Finance Officers Association, emailed this afternoon that there's a plan in place to eliminate LIBOR at the end of 2021. They've, they've got some recommendations out there of other benchmarks that can be used. I, I did uh, forward that to our city attorney and assistant city attorney to research other documents that that could be affected by. All right. Um, I think this is a great idea. Um, CDBG money really should be focused on lower uh, income persons and programs and areas. <clears throat> and I think that uh, the refurbishing of this particular building will add greatly to a neighborhood which has become, um, at least the business part of it is, has become kind of sad. So um, are there any other comments or questions? If not, I would look for a resolution authorizing uh, the city to apply for this grant through Section 108. So moved. So moved. Good morning. All right. So we have a motion and second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right. Let's go on to 3.5. 
which is a resolution authorizing the submittal of a substantial amendment to the community, our community development block grant program for the 2020 program year. Chad, is this yours? Sure, so this is in regards to two revolving loan funds that the city uh, manage and operate. So we have a revolving loan fund for job creation known as, an, known as the Economic Development Loan Fund. And we have a Housing Rehabilitation Loan Fund and that's used for low to moderate income residents to apply for housing rehab assistance to fix up their homes. Over the past three years, we've, uh, out of both of these programs, we have uh, given out minimal loans uh, particularly, I would say, because uh, we like to look at ourselves as a lender of last resort um, and that if they can't put deals together, they'll come to us for some gap financing. And given that the market has been, prior to COVID, relatively good, um, we have had still people paying on a timely fashion that has raised these fund balances pretty significantly, but we have not given out many loans. So HUD has been... Um, kind of on our case about reprogramming some of this funding, uh, clearly really on the fact that their goal is to get this money out on the street to service low to moderate income populations and not be sitting in an interest bearing uh, savings account. So just to give you a little bit of fund balance information, I think the housing rehabilitation loan fund has a balance uh, at the end of 2020 of about 720,000 projected to go up to about a million uh, at the end of 2021. And on uh, and the uh, um, business loan program has, I want to say, a 1.5 million fund balance. Sorry, Marty's going to tell me the right number. The uh, business revolving loan fund balance uh, is just under 800,000 projected at the end of uh, was budgeted at the end of 2020 with now a revised projection of just under a million and at the end of 2021 just under 1.1 million. So given that we're sitting with substantial dollars in both of those programs, we're uh, proposing to reprogram $300,000 out of the business loan program and $200,000 out of the housing rehabilitation program to put into uh, basically the uh, to, to make up the difference of the purchase of the building uh, for the Save-A-Lot. So we've budgeted, our accepted offer is about 985000 on the Save-A-Lot. With closing costs and other fees, we're, we've budgeted about a million dollars. Um, the idea would be to take 700000 from the Section 108, 300000 from this uh, reprogrammed funds, under the business program and be able to reimburse the city the roughly million dollars that we will have capital outlaid and, and spent uh, for the closing of the building in January. And then to take a, the 200,000 from the housing rehabilitation loan program and either use it to purchase the existing senior center building from the federal government or to apply it towards uh, construction on the um, save a lot. So we're in negotiations and we've gotten a number of options already from the federal government and the park service as to what to do with that building because it was deeded to the city in 1991, the current center. And there's a number of options with one of them being that we could purchase the building outright. So we would use the 200,000 to purchase the building outright um, and use, look, at, look at maybe a redevelopment opportunity in that area um, or apply it towards the uh, save a lot reconstruction. So at any way, any way that the 300,000 and the 200,000, the 500,000 would go towards senior services uh, related to the new building. Okay, questions for Chad. Bert. Um, for the 300,000 in job creation, is that job creation or is that something different? The two, the 500,000, the 300 and the 200 would not be job creation. It would be taken out of those funds and be reprogrammed into senior services, which is a public facility activity under the federal HUD definitions. So you're, you're taking federal money 
from one federal pocket and putting it in a different federal pocket. That's a good way of saying it, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Other questions for Chad? So Chad, my question is, um, I again, I think this is fine and really makes sense. Um, can you tell me why both the business um, development and the job uh, program uh, haven't worked very well? It would seem to me if we can't spend the money. Well, a lot of it has to do, our current interest rate is APR, so a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, people are, you know, they can get a, for a while they could get a better interest rate at their lender and they didn't have to go through all the federal red tape in order to get these funds and do yearly job creation counts and all of that kind of stuff. So I think it's, it's frankly the red tape requirements that come with federal dollars and a number of businesses, if they've got an established relationship with a lender, have gone to the lender and they can just finance their project fully that way. Um, and I, the other, you know, the other reason I would say is that um, we're only we're a subordinated lender, and we're typically only fifty percent of the um, maximum of the project. But it has to directly relate to a, uh, a an agreement that the people are going to create new full time equivalent. Uh, positions and and some people don't want to agree to that because they want the flexibility of not having to commit to uh, that job creation. So, and then the, I think the other piece of it is we have we, we have a we've got about a three million dollar loan uh, balance uh, unpaid loans. So our balance sheet is about three million and about three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand revolves in a year, and that's with nobody paying them off in advance. So we have substantial money coming in, and if we don't make some uh, big you know some big loans to uh, expanding or or new businesses, that you know there's just not a lot. Of I mean, a couple hundred thousand here and there, but um, back in, you'll recall back in, I think, 2019, we did a $500,000 note to Old World Creamery. Uh, and prior to that, I think we did a $300,000 note to Old World Creamery to create almost 30 new jobs. So it takes projects like that to come in for larger chunks of money. Um, but, you know, if those aren't out there, given the times we're in, um, you know, the money just, we keep collecting it, but we don't have a means of getting it back on the street. So the, each of those programs will continue. I mean, essentially we're taking all of this from fund balance. That is correct. And, okay. So, because I think the programs are, are valuable um, and, you know, if they're not workable, well, that's a different question, but at least... Uh, at least that's uh, that's something to consider. So, any other questions or comments? I am looking for a resolution to authorize the submittal of this substantial amendment to HUD uh, and the Community Development Block Grant Program for the 2020 uh, program year. So moved. Second. Any further discussions? Hearing none, all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, very good. Uh, and the chair votes aye, sorry. Um, 3.6 is a referral uh, authorizing the sale of 1402 Union Avenue. So I have to, <laughs> I have to tell you that I've just become a fan of Google Earth. And so, because I, I mean, I know the neighborhood, but I was trying to figure out what the building was specifically. And uh, if you haven't done Google Earth, it'll just zoom you right in and you can walk around the property. And it's, uh, for me at least, it's great fun. It's, you know, sad curiosity, but there you go. Um, so the building, um, Chad, does not look particularly bad on the outside, but it seems like it's not worth much for whoever's handling this. Thank you, Chair. So the this building, you'll recall, the city took from uh, Wisconsin Bank and Trust about 
two or three months ago because of outstanding building code violations. So maybe what you don't see on Google Earth is the fact that all the brick has fallen off the east side of the building and is sitting in the street right away, as well as on the north side of the building. So um, the after multiple building code violations, Wisconsin Bank and Trust deeded the building over to us for a dollar. Um, we had taken a proposal to the Architecture Review Board as to what we thought um, could be done with it in, to get it fixed and keep it on the tax rolls. So um, they approved a plan and then Bernie Romer went out and did an article in the, did a, a half page ad in the newspaper, put a for sale sign on it for about two months and then kind of had a set price of I think $40,000 um, we received two bids, one for 12900 and one for $12,500. Um, clearly, there's a lot of work that needs to be put into this, and it's going to take the right person to be able to do that. He did show it to about six or seven other parties, but nobody um, wanted to take on the project of fixing the brick on the um, east side of the building. So. Um, we're recommending moving forward at the 12,900 with Jim Schultz. He's a, uh, a person that um, does a lot of uh, good work in the community and has knows what needs to be done in the wherewithal to pull this off. Um, and then we can keep this building on the tax rolls and ultimately get some tenants uh, back in it versus moving through the raise order process. All right. Questions for Chad or comments? I talked to uh, Chad about this this morning and uh, just want to reiterate that Chad said that this gentleman does quality work and uh, also I uh, asked Chad when he intends on getting this done and Chad said he'd like to get it done by the end of the year. So uh, that, uh, uh, that was good news for me that he's going to move on this project and get it done. All right. Any other comments or questions? I've got a question. Go ahead, Roberta. Do we have Do we have a recourse if it languishes? We didn't. We I mean, we're we're compilable. we're selling it with the conditions that it's gonna <laughs> um, that he's gonna get it done. I mean, the recourse would be following the building code violation process again. Um, and getting you know orders on it, but I mean I'm he wants to, he wrote the offer and he wants us to close by the end of uh, by November sixth so that he can get going on this. So I guess I'm putting some trust in him, but you know we've had good relationships on previous projects with him, and he knows what he needs to do. And um, you know we're optimistic that he's going to get it done, but I personally don't want the building back if he's not going to get it done. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? If not, could we have a motion uh, for sale of this building for $12,900? So move, Boren. Second. All right. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. I think this brings us to our uh, date of our next regular meeting is November 9th. Do we have any quorum issues at this point? Okay, can we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right, if all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you all. Good meeting. Aye.